Greetings, everyone. It's your boy, Sonny Nesperance. Welcome to the, another episode of the I Thrive Podcast. This is episode 27. As you can see, I got my brother, Mark Marini from Jersey. Is that right, Jersey? Yes, sir. Jersey in the Jersey building, in the United Jersey. States. <laughs> Um, as you all know, this uh, podcast is sponsored by Juve Jouer. Juve Jouer is a program that teaches life skills through a variety of sports to kids. The program is designed for youth. You can go on jevejouer.ca, uh, J-E-V-E-U-X-J-O-U-E-R.ca, and you can see the information on the website. Also, this podcast only promotes and is affiliated with one church. It's First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ, where the leader, teacher, and guide is Apostle Pastor Gino Jennings. If anybody comes to you and says there's any other church but First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ, do not believe them. Do not listen to them. You've heard it from me. I'm telling you plain and simple to your face. It's only First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ and the leader and teacher and guide is Apostle Pastor Gino Jennings. You can go on YouTube. Um, there's a live, uh, teleca live te uh, telecast on Sundays. There's two services. You can also um, go on uh, thetruthofgod.com and see if there's a temple in your area. Also, there's going to be live webcasts in French and in Spanish on Tuesdays and Thursdays nights. Where the, you can, uh, I'll definitely put the information in the description so you can see and you can go on from there. All right, brother Mark, brother Mark, how how, how you doing, brother? How, how's oh, man, doing? I'm, feeling, I'm feeling wonderful, man. Busy day, but nonetheless, we thank God to be back on, man. It's my That's second cool. time on. I appreciate you having me. Oh, yes, no, no problem. You know, last, last you know, the, the, the first time I had you, Man, I didn't like it, it, it. You know, I mean, for me, it got you know a good, a good amount of views. Not the most of the craziest, but a lot of people. The, the most important thing is that people were saying they learned something. Wonderful. You understand that Wonderful. that that. I believe you're telling me in Philly, you seen a brother learned uh, something from that part. What did you learn again? Well, it's a few people that came up to me and um, they were like, "Yo, I got a chance to watch it and learn some stuff from it because it's these are things that that's not talked about." Oh yeah. You know, it's not talked about. No, only time they're talked about is when, unfortunately, it's time to take care of business. Yeah. So exactly. if you don't have things in place, then, you know, it doesn't make any sense, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's like, talk about it now so we can set things in place later, later on. on. So, uh, yeah, I was getting I was getting a few people that came up to me about that. So they kind of, they, they, you know, they pretty much enjoyed it. No, that's so I appreciate us being able to try to shed some light on it. No, absolutely, absolutely. Because that, that's the ultimate goal, you know. I want people to, to watch a show and be able to learn something, be able to learn something they can go forward with. You understand not uh, into something where it's going to be any gossip. Um, right, right. Person left that, that person left this and drama this, drama that. Talking about people that don't, don't even care a, a penny about you at right, all. Right. So the goal is, is to educate anyone watching because, you know, I, I encourage even youth to watch that right now, 13, 14 years old. If you have time oh, to man. watch a YouTube video of whatever thing of nothing, that's not, that's not productive that you're just getting right. information off of somebody else's life. It's not doing nothing for you versus that's right. something that's going to help you going forward. You're not going to have to say, make the same mistakes. So many people made in, uh, before you. You That's know, true. and so it's 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 honestly it was a big big eye opener, and for myself there's and it's I'm I'm always I'm always willing to learn. I never want to think I'm Mister Know It All. Right, Keep right, right. So whatever it is, I need to learn. Whatever it is, I need. Cause I know there's always, I know there's something out there I can learn. I know there's something. True. That's you a know? good mindset to have, man. Yeah, absolutely. very good mindset to have, my absolutely. brother. So we're gonna get started today, man. And, and, and I I seen Brother Mark post. Something on Facebook, and man, I I was just looking through the I was looking through the comments. I'm like, wow, man, like I was, and, and so the, the question was, uh, would you rather a, a 850 credit score, b, uh, two million dollars right there up front, or c, four thousand dollars a week, not a month, but four thousand dollars a week. Rest of your life. Pretty much passing as an income for the rest of your life. Now, for me, brother Mark, for I, you know, I, I, I give you the, the the light spotlight. For myself personally, man, when I was looking in terms of comments, you know, because my head just starts to play. Man, if if it's A, okay, boom. If it's B, okay, boom. If it's C, I was seeing quite a number of people saying B because they're saying, man, I could get that four thousand a week, but tomorrow is not promised. But then I'm telling myself, okay, if you get that $2 million and God cuts you off the next day, what, what do you do then? You know, 
And then I right. saw people that were choosing B as well because they said, man, I could take that. I could put it in investment, get a five to 10% return, so and so forth. But then I was telling myself, there's no guarantee in that. <clears throat> there's no right. guarantee that it will actually work. There's True. many, listen, with a, a $2 million investment, sometimes may not even be enough for you to make $4,000 a week for the, a week oh. for the rest of your life. Right, right. I mean, I can go anywhere, any country. Huh? any state, any province, and literally keep making $4,000 a week of pa that's passive income right passive now. Passive income, the best income to make. The, be the best income, income to make. And so for me, what my answer would, 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 would be uh, is I would pick C. The reason why I would pick C personally um, is because my C is guaranteed. I can do, uh, I can do let's say, a four thousand dollars or three thousand dollar investment in the first week, man. Right. If I lose it, I lose it. But next week, I'm guaranteed that four thousand dollars again. That's true. I could use that four thousand dollars a week to, to pay. That could literally pay off all my liabilities. That's you understand? Right. That's true. Whereas if if I'm literally, I could be working at a job. You could be working at a job twenty twenty five thousand a year and still laugh because all of that is coming to you. You have that's that four thousand a right. week. We're not talking about a month right now. We're not Perfect. talking about a month. We're talking about a week. A week, sixteen thousand dollars a month. A month of, of, of do you do absolutely nothing? There's nothing at all. So many investments you could put that in. Have your money sit down and just relax, and it just grows and grows and grows and grows. But you know that that is my that is myself and what I would pick because of that guarantee on the regular, because that making, listen, $4,000 a month, hmm? $4,000 a month is difficult. Just $4,000 right. a month alone. That's now true. you're going to tell right. me I'm getting $4,000 a week. A week. <laughs> so, so for me, that, that, that would be my pure answer because that right there, that is what I'm working for. Wonderful. That is like if if I, I tell people moreover, if you're not working to create any form of passive income, you're gonna work for the rest of, of your life. life. That's right. And, I agree with that. You know, and especially in today, things are getting more and more expensive. That's right. You have to find certain and, and people in terms of investing, when it comes to real estate, it's not as easy as one, two, three. There's so many things like all right. You can say, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna invest in a property, maybe rent it out for a year or two. There's, there's so much you can deal with. There's so much you can go through. Maybe they don't want to pay on time. Maybe they're saying they got fired. I mean, COVID. Look how COVID happened. Yeah, it's right. A lot of, it's a lot of people now that's waiting on their money to come, you know, and people yet are still staying in their house. Exactly. You can't kick them out. Exactly. By law. Exactly. You know. COVID, so, so, right. so you know. So now it's like there's so many things you can put into that. And so many things that I can leave. So when, uh, 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 God willing, my kids can hold on to it tomorrow. You understand? And my family, and it could create something generational. If I have, I would always, I will always rather pick a guarantee than something that is by chance. Because that too, because it's, I mean, think about it. $2 million, you have to ask yourself the question. Am I getting anything else after that? No. The only right. how you're getting something else is if, your investments do work, which most right. of the times is not the case. You understand? It's it's very because a lot of people they know what they're doing in their investments. You understand? And now if I I, I could take that two million, let's say in terms of property, right? Right. The mark, man, I'm gonna invest in terms of a property that I die. Because you go a lot of times people think it's just a mortgage. There's so much more than a mortgage you're paying in the house. You 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 should definitely have the money to. Um, pay off that house or put down a 20% or 50%, I agree. And, you know, but you're going to have property tax. <clears throat> you're going to still have to deal with maintenance. That's you're right. going to have to deal with all those things, meaning you're, you're going to still have to work unless right. you give it to somebody else. And a lot of the times people would rather do things themselves because they know nobody's going to have the same desire That's to do right. the work That's that true. they want to true. do. You know what I mean? Like I, I may be a barber. I have my shop and I'm running it in the way I run it. And I may tell my son, say, look, I'm going away for a week. I need you to run the shop, you know, good. I need you to run the shop sharply. That my son is not going to have that same. He's going to care about me. You right, understand? Right. He's going to care about his father. But he's not going to have that same care 
and that same desire have. to do the work that I have That's because right. I'm the one that built the shop. You understand? I'm the one that would put the blood, sweat, and tears. I'm the one that was doing the late nights. I was the one. You get what I'm saying? I so agree. Now, if you're telling me I could four thousand dollars a week, that could even allow so many people to chase their dream job of what they want to do. Like you can literally go to school year after year, year after year, no sweat, no problem. Right. Because that money is a guarantee. guarantee. You can learn from so much, go to these seminars. You can fly to so-and-so place. You can fly to... So because that money coming in is guaranteed. I'm telling you right now, if you're not working to create any, um, any form of passive income, any form of passive income, you're going to be working for the rest of your life. I 100% agree. I, and you could put things down and it's good to have things going forward, but it's very important to know how to, and, and, and when, what I realized, a lot of people started to realize that as well, especially in the, the, the sporting industry, oh, right? Yes. And I think the first player to implement, there were players before Michael Jordan, and because I don't know if you know, there's some players that were able to save money from the NBA and invest into Popeyes and stuff like that and get a return. Obviously, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Your names aren't big, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. Because, hey, Michael Jordan or whatever the case is. Michael Jordan changed the game because a player that was that good, uh, underpaid compared to today, a player like oh, that, question. like 36 mil, you know, but yes, it's inflation and whatnot. But today you have players who are barely playing, not that good, not that committed. They're, they're making a million dollars a year. Easy. They're making $500,000 a season. Some say $500,000 for NBA. That, that's a lot for doing absolutely nothing. Sitting on the that's bench. Right. Just sitting on the bench and coming to practice. And then you have doctors and surgeons have to work 80, 90 hours a right. week. And they're right, not going to make that money. They're not going to touch that. Come on now. So Michael Jordan, the reason why I say he changed the game a lot is because it's it's the people he had around him, I believe. I agree. And when you have the correct people around you, you're going to know which investments to there make. There you go. You know, you know what I've, I could put my investments in. Because if I'm constantly around people who are just complaining, man, things is tough, man. They, you know, it's, it's hard to get this. It's hard to afford this. Versus somebody around you that's saying, man, have you ever figured out how you can afford it? Have right, you figured right. out how did you get so deep in a hole in your finances? What brought you there? Because sometimes people, they get in certain situations because of people because they didn't know no better. I agree. You know, uh, and a lot of the times they were that person where I can use, you know, you're saving your money, you're investing your money. So, hey, brother Mark, man, I'm thinking if you could slide me $5,000. And that's why I tell people, if you have it like that, keep quiet. Keep Not quiet. Every, listen, keep why quiet. would I want to have it like that? And I'm telling every single person, yeah, man, you know, I got it like this, you know what I'm saying? I just made $10,000 the other day, you feel me? You know what I'm saying? We got, right then and there, shoot, a random first cousin's going to come. Oh I yes, man! That's right, making it like that. Let me just slide five hundred from him. He he he's not gonna care. And when you start to do, because a lot of times people, you know, when they lend money, they actually charge interest. But of course, if you're going to somebody, you know, um, I'm gonna say here, here's the five hundred. You know, pay me back whenever you get the chance. And all of a sudden, you see everybody is coming to you. You get what I mean? That's and true. so when you have just the the the, the right people around you. That's in, in, in terms, like even people in truth, nothing wrong. There's a sinner out there letting you know about a simple investment. Say, yeah, hey, oh, yeah. you know, nothing broken wrong. no law. Nothing wrong about that. No law. Oh, man, I can't talk to you. You're a sinner. Get out of my face. You know what I'm saying? And be like that, man, that's on you. But look, I, I've, I've spoken to a lot of sinners. I got the information they gave me. It was like, wow, because the people I was dealing with were owners, right? I'm telling you, conversation with an owner, and for somebody that you know works for the owner, it's two different things. The two person that works for the owner, they're constantly complaining about life, constantly complaining about bills, constantly complaining about the situation, right. blah blah blah. The owner always finding solutions. Man, how can I make this this restaurant better? How can That's I make right. this business better? There's a different thinking. They're thinking. You understand? And school don't teach you that. Absolutely, and they won't. School and that's teach something. you how to go work for somebody. Exactly. They teach you business. And that's the thing. When you're going to, and, and and I'm glad you say that because that's what you're being trained for from the minute right. you start. Like it could be middle school or high school. Because think about it. Wake up early in the morning. You spend all day, you know, you're getting taught. You know, school's done. You go home, you're looking for something else to do. And also remember when it comes Friday, you're always hopeful for the weekend. Ah, right. it's the weekend, da, 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 boom, boom, boom. Same thing when you go into the corporate world. You start work on Monday. 
go to work, whatever the time, nine to five, eight to five, whatever time you have. Friday, in Friday come, oh yeah, it's the weekend, man. Oh, let's go, it's the weekend. You're working for a weekend. You're, you're working for two days of the week. And the <sighs> next thing you know, as soon as Monday, you know, it's Sunday. Monday's not even there, you're already depressed. Monday, Monday's not even there, you're already depressed. You understand? And look, it's not to knock anybody. If you have a job, you need to use a job. Right, right. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. But I'm just that. saying we mm-hmm. should just have, give me other options as well in school. Don't just give me one option. Going to school is not for everyone. Exactly. But go, we still go, need go, people go, to go now. to school, though. We still need, because I don't want nobody working on me yeah. in, a, in a medical field, and they haven't went to school. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm going to need to see some licenses first. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. so we still need people to, to go to school, but yeah. Give us more like, it, it amazes me where people say, well, I'm going to start my own business. I'm going to go to school for business and be taught by a person that's working for somebody. Exactly. How can you teach me about business and you're working for somebody? Exactly. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? So yeah. no one in the history of the business world went to school to go into business for themselves. Exactly. You exactly. look at even all the way down to somebody like like Mark, uh, Zub, what is his name, Zubenberg, something like yeah, that? Zubenberg, Zuckerberg, Facebook. Zuckerberg. He dropped out of college. I know. He and he had no a few gigs. people with him. Yep, and yep. one of the guys, I think one or two had quit because their parents were like, listen, man, go to school, get your education. And here, here Mark, billions, billions yeah. and billions of dollars. And that one guy that quit, I think he makes a million dollars a year. Yeah. One million or billions because mm-hmm. his parents were focused just on going to school. Yeah. And Mark was thinking about business. No one that did it. All these guys, they went out, they started a business. It fell. They started another one. That one probably fell. They started mm-hmm. another one. It took off for them. Yeah. That's how business is. That's how business works. Exactly. You don't go to school to go into business for yourself. Mm-hmm. The way to learn about business is to go work for yourself. Absolutely. That's how you learn about business. Absolutely. And I'm glad you mentioned that because that's why I let people know there's things you're going to have to go to school for. Right. I agree. You want to be a doctor, a, 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 a neurologist, a surgeon. Those things, I don't mind. You know, a I have teacher. no problem. You know, you know, teacher, you, you know, getting your teacher license and all that. There's things I, I, I don't, I don't mind. You have to go do that because a lot of the times, not every doctor is, is a good doctor out there. I Some agree. doctors is because they were smart enough to be able to take the classes That's right. and pass their grade. So I'm saying you're going to always have that person that wants to be a doctor. That's passion. Nobody's going to stop them from being a doctor. Let him be a doctor. Right. But not every person can be in business and not every business person can be a doctor. I you understand? Not every business person can be a lawyer, can be an attorney, can be a judge. Not every, it's a, you know how many kids that is? And, and I think what they should start doing as well is implement like people who are, you know, in the NCAA who you, you listen before the first game, you know, this person's staying for a year and you know, they're getting drafted next year. You know, you know, they're getting, dra- you know, they should make sure they implement courses for guys like this that are going to the NBA because they're going to get uh, money they've never seen before. That's true. Now it's You're about, right. and if they don't have the right people around them to understand how to manage that money and how to use it, they're going to be lost. I mean, look at Alan Iverson, Mike Tyson, Antoine Walker. I don't know if you heard of it. You probably oh, don't yeah. watch oh, hockey. Yeah. Um, oh, hockey. It was a guy, um, something Kane. He, um, what happened with him? I kid you not. 49, 29 years old, $49 million contract. He's in $27 million debt. He had to file bankruptcy. How do you get $49 million and get into $27 million debt? Education. And, and, and here's the crazy part. He's, still, he's, he's not no old guy. This is during his career. Wow. You have to. You have, come on now. And it's, it, you know, I don't look at someone like that and said, man, or this, or this, and it could just simply be they weren't educated the right way. And if they were- Oh, that's the main thing. Exactly. That's literally the main thing. Because you got to understand, the government don't want us to learn about financial education. Exactly. Like, mm-hmm. that's that's like, they're like, oh, no, because they get paid off our ignorance. Absolutely. So if I teach people how to deal with their money, they're going to start make, making better decisions with their money. Exactly. So no, no, let's go give them this big contract. And, you know, he, he see the million dollar contract, number one, they got to recognize, oh, 500,000 got to get taken off this check. Yeah. So now it's no longer 1 million now. It's 500,000. Mm-hmm. He want to buy this, buy that, buy this. When it's all said and done, after he done bought the house, the cars, the jewelry, bought his mom or somebody's house, all liabilities. Broke again. all liabilities, all liabilities. And then he then spent the money that maybe taxes, you know. So it's like, 
they just not like we're not they i know here in the states and i know you're in canada mm -hmm. here in the states they do not want to teach us about money man because they profit off our ignorance yeah, yeah, and absolutely. this is why the debt is way sky high this is why when you turn 18 credit card is sent Something, yep. automatically yep. 18 cool. years old you see them at the college court uh campuses where handing mm -hmm. out credit cards yeah it happens over here too it happens in canada as well same thing and, and we're not because if you start educating these people they're not going to take the credit cards so guess mm -hmm. what now that that industry start going down they can't have that they mm -hmm. can't afford that so guess what don't tell them nothing about money wait until they turn 40 and 50 and 60 years old when they can't do nothing about it exactly exactly because that's the age where it's like man you put yourself in so much debt and you go and realize i shouldn't have and another thing too people stop living out of your means that's that's another thing as well people love to live out of your means I I, i'm telling you the number one consumers are black people and i'll tell you why that's right you're right every that's a fact every nationality they teach and learn how to sell to consumers and the number one consumers they sell to are black people i remember i had to go because my wife needed um just like some you know hair stuff to go right. for, for a store she went to a hair store chinese in there owns it but guess who's working for them guess guess who's selling guess whose pictures are on the windows it's black people black sure. people and now when you know the black lives matter movement was going on they were starting to put in the store oh these are black owned products these are black but who is making that profit at the end of the day that's right. You understand? And there was even a, a, a video a, a, a video that looked like it was a long time ago. It was a man explaining how to sell to the Negro, how to sell to the Negro man and how to sell to the Negro woman. He said, man, to the man, he's just going to buy. And, it, and what's crazy, what he said in that video, it is today. The man he wants to impress. He wants to show people that, that what he has, but he doesn't really have it. So right there, that's why, think about it. That's how, how for me, before I buy a $300 shoes, my credit needs to be over 300. Come on, come on. <laughs> I hear that. Come That's on. That's true, man. You know? That's and true. So, and if you look at it, and he said for the the woman, they're going to buy stuff. And, and you know, it was crazy. They're going to buy stuff and put it in their house and never use it. Never, never use it. I used to be when I was at, when I was at home with my, um, my parents, when I was living at home, I'm asking my mom, how come how come these things are here and we can't even use it? Ah, just, just leave it there. It's, why though? Why? What you know what I'm saying? And it's crazy what you were saying then, it's still happening today. It applies think, to you know, today. that's why people right. are upset with Michael Jordan as well, because he has you know these shoes 250, 300, and all this and that. And they say, Oh no, oh, you should be up. But the thing is, ask yourself the question. When I and when I look at and look, when I talk to owners and stuff, people who are wealthy, you won't you won't even think you won't even think they have money. You won't even regular jeans, regular shoes, you know. They may have, you know, a nice little, nice car, whatnot. But, you know, at the end of the day, they have a house. They have property. That's right. Versus the people I've met, my days, they got the shoes. They got all this and that left and right, but nothing to show for it, you know? So it, it still happens over here in Canada. They go to the universities and they say, here you go. And they have no clue that it's not their money on that credit. They have no clue. That's why I'm pushing it, you know, and, and, and um, trying to uh, educate the youth right away. Cause that's a niche I can go after. The niche that's already like, I, that, 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 that niche, the other niche I leave it for, you know, that's for you. You know, the people that are already <laughs> all in that debt and all in the situation, like that's a whole nother story, you know? So I want to attack where and go after the niche that, that has time to learn and that has time to say, okay, here's what I can do left and right. And boom, boom, boom. But brother, my, I, you know, I want, I want you to answer, you know, the question in terms from what you would do. Um, is it a 850 credit score B $2 million up front, and C $4,000 a week for the rest of your life. So before I answer that, you made a good point earlier talking about ownership mm. and this is one of the things that i'm trying to this is one of my goals as well not only to teach financial education but to teach people about business mm. just like an overall view of it because what's happening is a lot of people so there's a book i believe we talked about this there's a guy named robert kiyosaki yes yes and he came out with a book called rich dad poor, poor dad. dad oh yeah and within this book he talks about the cash flow quadrant mm. And on the left side of the cash flow quadrant, you have the employee. He, he basically says there's four ways that we make money. Yeah. There's only four ways. No matter who you are, your money is going to come from one of these four ways. Yeah. So on the left side of the quadrant of the cash flow quadrant, you had an employee. 
Then under that, you have something called a self-employed, mm -hmm. an individual. Then on the right side of the cash flow quadrant, you had a business. Yeah. And then under that, you had investing. Yes. So those are the four ways that one make can earn their, their money. So with the employee, the left side of the quadrant, you work for somebody. So pretty much, Jay, you pretty much have to do what they want you to do. Yeah. You don't do what they want you to do, they can just fire you at any time as we're yeah. seeing it right now. Yeah. And even, like, if you do, you know, even if you're doing what they want you to do, they can still fire you. They'll fire you. They come yeah. in mad one day and you, man, I got to do that too. You know what? Pack your stuff and get out. Can you? <laughs> and now you got a household of people that you got to uh, go ahead and provide for. Exactly. So you got the employee. Then you got somebody to self-employed where they're like, I'm tired of working for somebody. Mm -hmm. So now they go out and own a job. Yeah. So now they making all this money. You can make a lot of money as being self-employed. You may be like a dentist or something that own your practice. Mm -hmm. Or you may be a hairstylist that own your shop or your barber shop or something. You, got, you can make a lot of money, but all of your income is going to come from you. So yeah. guess what? If I'm not doing someone's hair, cutting somebody's hair, if I'm not in someone's mouth, I'm not dealing with somebody's body, mm. I don't make money as a doctor. Exactly. So that's the left side. So all of my money comes from what I do. Mm. The right side of the quadrant is where most people have an, un they have a false, they don't understand how the business world works. Mm. So now they look at things as a scam. <laughs> but yet, <laughs> other nationalities is looking at that like, wait a minute, you mean to tell me I can do, so on the right hand side of the cash flow quadrant, this is why a man can buy a McDonald's. He'd go out and recruit the managers, mm -hmm. uh, general manager, cooks, mm -hmm. people to clean the restaurant. But where's that business owner at? Yeah, he's he's not, not even at the, at the McDonald's. He's not there. What did he do? He leveraged his time. That's what he did. And that's why when you have a system in place, now they can hire 15, 16 year olds to come in and work in the system. They can hire them. So guess what? You work, you walk into a McDonald's. Every McDonald's practically is set up the same way. Exactly. You got the menu at the top, mm -hmm. French fries on the left, mm -hmm. bathrooms on the right. Mm -hmm. You just plugging people into the system. Yeah. That's business. That's not no pyramid scheme. Mm. Everything is structured like a pyramid when you really look at it. Business, you got a CEO at the top. Mm -hmm. Then you got some presidents. Then you got some middle management. It's going to be more of them. And then you got everybody else at the bottom. That's just how it is. Exactly. That's just how business is, where people make money off of other people. Like I go, I, I remember working at a hotel and I remember, uh, I don't know how y'all do in Canada, but over here we have temp agencies. And what the temp agencies would do, they would hire, they would go out and gather, they would go out and recruit a whole bunch of people. Oh, to work yeah, for the yeah. Temp yeah, we do that over here too. Mm -hmm. So the hotel would be paying the temp agency $30, between $25 to $30 to have that housekeeper work for them. The temp AC is only paying them $10 an hour. Yeah, yeah. So they're making $20 off of every hour that you work. Yeah, yeah. And that's how they make their money. They make their money off of other people. Exactly. That's business. Yeah. So when people got to understand, <laughs> listen, get out this, this foolish mindset about, uh, you know, because they they looking at business as this big, corporation or something like that you can start a a long a long company or something like that a uh, landscaping company mm -hmm. where you got other people like me you talked about before we got on where you got two people working for you yeah you're leveraging your time mm -hmm. you got two now another next five to ten years you may have a hundred working for you exactly exactly but you got to believe that you got to believe that you're able to do that so we got to start owning stuff so we got that side the business then you got the investments where their money make money for them mm -hmm. Because money don't call off from work. Yeah. Money don't, you know, money gonna start. You can make money in your sleep. That's yeah. that passive income that me and you were talking about. Exactly, exactly. And I'm I call it sleep money. Exactly. And I'm I'm glad you mentioned uh McDonald's because a lot of people they and I asked this to the students I was teaching financial literacy. I said, Why is McDonald's a billion dollar company? They're like, um, I mean the burgers, the 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 food. I said, my, and this, this is what I'm talking about. If, if, if these things were educated to kids in school earlier on, you never know what could have been started. You I never, agree. you never know what businesses and you may have needed that business. I you know what I'm saying? People refuse business, but they use that business that they were so like, like this, Oh, don't do business, blah, blah, blah. Just go to school, whatever this is. Airbnb. Hmm? 
when people are looking at, they're looking at, they're looking at Airbnb. Oh, you know I mean, I mean, that's a business. That's and right. that's, yes, one, it is. that's one of the most slick and smartest business in the world. Yes, it is. Think about it. Think about it right now. Think about it. I don't own any, I don't own any, any, Nothing. any property. I just have somebody say, look, I have this person here. You can rent your house out and we take our profits. But now they're not focused on that one location. That's it's right. every single where. Millions. So, exactly. Millions of people, man. Millions of people. So now when I look at McDonald's, what his story was is when uh, somebody, and once again, the people you have around you, somebody came to him and informed him, you're not in the burger flipping business. You're in the real estate business. That's like, right. He was making his small profits from one location and he wasn't the owner. He couldn't do anything. You understand? Right. But what that man or the lawyer explained to him is, the moment the two owners come out of that McDonald's, they're no longer the owner of that McDonald's. The, they're, right now, they're on the property. What you need to purchase is the land That's and right. put the McDonald's on it. And now he just kept on purchasing land, adding McDonald's here, That's adding right. McDonald's there, adding... Now, McDonald's, there's so many over the world. And the crazy part is um, he, uh, he, he paid off the owners and he said they could get 1% royalty. We know, of course, they wanted to reject it and all this and that. If they were to keep their end of the deal, they would have been making a hundred million dollars a year doing nothing. That's one percent of me. One percent. You see what I mean? Ownership. And that's where, when you learn how to, because I realized if I leverage my time, that's stop right. fuck. And when you people look, when you're a self employer, you're still an employee. You just work for yourself. That's right. And you that's almost never have time. Employee. Exactly. You just right. never have time. You get what I mean? You have to probably wake up at six, come home at 11 p.m. Yes, you made a whole lot of money and you're making a whole lot of money within those weeks and months, but you have to understand you have to be there to work. That's so right. There's no difference versus, and in fact, it's even tougher because when you work for somebody, you at least get some two week paid vacation. Right, right. You bought vacation, could you pay yourself? Uh, are you, you know, how can you get it? Right, you have to find somebody and it's so, it's so simple. And I say, if you can look, if I can teach somebody, you know, in terms of how to tutor and the way to tutor, if I can teach somebody how to be with kids, if I can teach somebody how to run fitness sessions, if I can teach somebody how to have the kids listen to you and respect you, if I can teach you that, my days, I'm leveraging my time. I can right. place you. And on top of it, the kids, they're, le they're learning something. It makes me happy where they're not coming and saying, yo, you're abusing me, man. These hours are reckless. And what I do, I work with the kids. You know what I tell these kids in high school? Tell me, what is your schedule like? I'll work around your schedule. You know, out there, hey, here's the job. You have to, you know, do what you have to do. And now they're going to have to probably miss class. They're going to have to not study enough. I literally work with these youth. That's I say, tell man. me Thank God for your you. schedule, and I will work around your schedule. All right, I can tutor on so-and-so days, but, you know, these days it's tough. I have, like, for example, one, she told me, um, She's going to be available at the end of the month because her first semester finishes at the end of the month. She will be able to have more clientele. I said, no problem. You understand? Because that, that's, that's the ultimate goal I'm trying to build here. Is Because right. I understand the more you know you respect them, the more you show love to them, the more you're there for them and help them, the more it's going to come back to you. I agree. You know? You and so now it's leveraging. In a good way. Exactly. Now nah, that ownership, man. Owning something. That's what you hear in the music industry a lot. Mm -hmm. Ownership. Ownership. So it's like, you know, um, before I answer the question that you just asked me, there was a guy, I forget his name, but he played Lion. He was the voice of the Lion King, the first Lion King mm. that came out. And his mom, they, they was like, look, we're going, we can give you two, I believe it was $2 million. And his mom said, no, we don't want that. We want ownership. We, we want some royalties that'll follow oh. us. Oh, uh, he's a, a black actor. Yeah, I think I his name is something, he was or... Kiever or something like he was, that. He was in the smart guy, right? The smart yes. guy. Yeah, smart no, guy. He played Michael Jackson uh, when he was young yeah. in an old movie. But uh, they end up taking the one where they got a small check up front. Mm -hmm. But over the years, he's made more money off of it. Exactly. Than what he would have just accepting that $2 million. So my answer is C. But here, here's the thing. There's no wrong answer in this. Yeah. And one of the reasons why I pose this question is, I knew I would get three different mindsets mm. because I first started asking people this question and believe it or not, I had some people say, yo, I need an 850 credit. 
So they said, I don't forget about the two million, forget about the four thousand, give me eight hundred and fifty dollar, uh, eight hundred and fifty credit score. Mm. And I'm saying eight hundred and fifty credit score, but a good credit score is a very good thing to have. If you don't have a good credit score, you you're gonna have some problems. Absolutely. You're gonna especially if you don't have no money because. I always tell people just because you may have a good credit score, that's not an indicator that you have a lot of money. Yeah. Credit is based on debt. If you look, if you go to FICO's website, they have three or four things that determine how they come up with your credit score. Mm. And all of it is surrounded around debt. How much debt that you have, mm. how are you going about paying it? What type of debt that you have? Yeah. So a man that may have a lot of money, he may not need to borrow no money. He pay everything off debt. So he may not have a credit score at all. So no credit score is equivalent to having bad credit because yeah. you don't have no credit score. But if you paying everything cash, you don't really need it anyway. Exactly. But in this life, you still, that's why I tell people, you got these different credit counselors out here and listen, those are good people. You want to get with those people to be able to get yourself, your, your, your credit where it need to be at. Yeah. So there's no wrong answer. Mm. I chose C because I thought about long-term. Yeah. And that was one of the reasons why I posed that question too, because when people are thinking about investments, they're not thinking about long-term, they're thinking about right now. Mm -hmm. But if they thought about long-term, like I did some numbers, I was looking at some numbers and just to give you an idea. So I teach this thing called debt stacking or snowballing mm -hmm. and what it do is you know you got your debt over maybe you got five or six things you're paying off usually when somebody pay off a credit card they kind of take that money that they were using they go blow it they just oh i got 200 dollars freed up let me go buy this let me go buy that mm -hmm. or sometimes they rack up that credit card back up again so what we teach people is when you finish paying that particular debt off take that 200 that you were already committed to paying and put it onto the next debt. Mm. So we're stacking. So instead of me paying $200 toward my car loan, now I got an extra 200, now I'm paying $400. Mm. That's gonna knock that debt out quick because now I'm paying it, it's like I'm paying it twice. Mm. That's when that debt go away, I'm gonna take that 400 and I'm gonna stack it to the next debt mm. or snowball it to the next debt. So something that you should be in debt for 23 years, now you're only in debt for nine years. Wow. We're using the same money that you were already committed to paying mm. so in this case a person was paying like twenty seven hundred dollars a month to fund that debt now you do twenty seven hundred dollars a month for 23 years that would get you 2.4 million dollars yeah. in 23 years mm -hmm. just invest in two thousand seven hundred dollars yeah. so imagine if i doubled that so when people are talking about investments the thing you i look about with when it comes to investments is all about time yeah Time is everything. And you got to also take into account something called compound interest. Yeah. So people say, well, if I'm doubling the amount of money I put in, then I should have double the amount of money at the end of that investment. But that's not how this thing works. Conventional say, conventional thinking says double the amount of money. I have uh, doubled the amount of money that I invest and I'll double what I had. So I just told you $2,700 a month for 23 years to get you 2.4. So if you double that, that's about 5,400. Yeah. If you double that, man, you'll have millions of dollars in 23 years. So it'll, it will over exceed the 2 million yeah. that uh, plan. I think it was option B yeah. was the 2 million, right? 2 million, yeah. 2 million cash, but no one's wrong in this situation. Every, yeah. it just depends on how they're looking at it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No. And, and I'm, and I'm glad you made mention to that. You know, and in the terms when you said, because there's, there's always going to be different mindsets. You're always going to get right. a different answer. I believe there was like, I don't know if there was like one or two people that answered A, That's you know, right. from what I saw. Um, but because it's, they probably have an understanding different. That's right. You know what I mean? Versus somebody who's chose B, they have an understanding differently. For myself, That's the right. reason I go with C is because I understand that $4,000 a week, it's guaranteed, guaranteed. You know, and there's people that have to work. Like, that's why I say, like, put it like this. In terms of, I look in terms of within stocks, for example, I've, you know, I've, I've heard of it, but I've never, I like, I never kind of got into it. You know what right, I mean? Right. It was never a conversation because I mean, the people around me was never something to, to talk about. Right. Um, I never, you know, heard of it. I don't like, what, what is this? It's probably like some complicated thing. Some probably something you just can't get into. And then all of a sudden I just started to realize, I just, man, let me, let me just look into it. Let me see what this thing is all about when it comes to stocks. 
Stocks is probably the most probably the most simplest way somebody can make any form of passive Very income. Simple. Very simple. I've, I've already made passive income with invest because you know I started little. I'm not gonna be one. You know, let me slap thirty thousand dollars in no, there. No, that's I, smart, man. You know, and smart. I don't know what I'm doing. If I'm doing something, you have to know what you're doing. Something I believe I Warren Buffett says is is risk is not no. Is, is a lot of times people think risk is um, not knowing what you're doing, which is right. false. Risk is you know what you're doing, but you're just you're just taking a risk by doing it. You know what I mean? Somebody may say, you know what? Because when it comes to stocks, people don't understand you have to evaluate the company. That's why what some people, what some people do now, they have um like they have their own clubs where you can pay a monthly fee, and that main person they're telling you what the next stock to invest in, and because they look into the company. The reason why they can do that, not everybody, because think about it. If somebody can't even know business themselves, how can they look into a business and know that business is going to grow? I agree. For example, Amazon. Amazon launched in 1997. People could have bought Amazon at $18 in 19... Mm. $18 a share. Now, somebody asked, what's a share? A share is when you own a percentage, when you own, when you have a, a, a little ownership into that company. Now, well, when you say. have ownership into that company, what some companies, they do, they pay you something called... Di- That's what, you know, my, a lot of people working for is dividends. Dividends. That's so right. dividends. The company is literally paying you a, a certain a, a certain percentage for each share that you have. They're just paying you because you have it, paying right. you because you hold it. You know, I'll give you an example for Microsoft. Microsoft has been there around for years. I mean, you have a you have probably you have, have a laptop, probably have their systems. It's been sure. around for right. years. Apple, Apple. You see, this is what I don't understand. People will they can't even afford the iPhone, so they have to pay a monthly fee for the iPhone. We're not realizing those they could have afforded the stock. You're saying, or well, let me put five hundred dollars down for this iPhone. You could literally pay two, three. If you're in America, you could get at least right now at least two, three stocks for that. And then sure. over time, over each month, you keep building in. So I I looked into it. I and and I looked into. I saw um, Amazon. If people were to invest in Amazon or whoever did invested in Amazon, like let's say ten thousand dollars in Amazon back then. It would have been way over, uh, a bit over a million today. If they were to invest a uh, thousand back then, it would have been three hundred something thousand. Because now, uh, uh, a share for Amazon is like oh, it's over three thousand. That's for one Just share. One. Because right. think about it, he was think think about that. Remember that four thousand dollars a week. He was thinking long term. Long term. That's what it. At, at that time, right then, there was businesses that started for the right now. Right. And people are like, yo, who, who's going to invest? Who's going to buy online? I'm not, not going to do that. Come on, man. I'm, I'm going to be going to my shop. I'm going to be going to my store. This guy is crazy. This guy, I'm going to, why am I going to invest in this? Over time, because he knew technology has to grow. And, right. and by that, and in the 1997s, technology was growing. Internet was, you know, kind of coming out. People were kind of questioning, man, have you ever heard of a laptop? Like laptop. People are literally, literally asking, that. have you ever heard of a laptop? What is that thing? What does it do? Big and heavy. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And so as over time, that thing kept on growing, kept on growing. In the midst of that, Netflix. My people have Netflix membership. They're paying for that per month. But don't real Netflix stock, I believe in 2010, was $7.87 for per share. Now today, it's over 500, over $500. Now, the 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 I'm not going to say disadvantage for me in the stocks game. I can't invest in everything. I can't invest in gambling companies. I can't invest in marijuana companies. I can't invest in any companies uh, where it's going to contradict the scriptures. So yeah, you may lose out on that, but there's still other companies you can gain in. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And now when you- You actually got, still got companies that you can be able to go into and make make money off of it. Absolutely. And if you look at it today, uh, Amazon, he's laughing. You know why? Everybody had- during the pandemic over here in Canada, people had no choice but That's to right. do online. People, You're right? When you look at it now, it's even being pushed more. You go into Walmart's, some stuff not even in the stores. They say it's better that you just order that online. That's right. Starting to re- and Walmart's been around for years. They, 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 they they've been around. And they for- making a killing too. Exactly. They exactly. making a killing. But who's and that's my thing for the for the viewing audience. Who's teaching us this stuff? That's what I want to know. <laughs> you know, and that's why when I sit down with people, it's not just, and that's what people need to understand. It's not just for you. Yeah. It's for the people who you're connected to exactly. so that everybody have this information. So can you imagine 30 years go by 
and you're sitting there talking to somebody. Yeah, you know, y'all talking about investments and they ask you, when did you learn about? Oh, I learned about that 30 years. I learned about that in 2020. Yeah. Why you never told me about that? Yeah. And now you you sitting there broke, nothing saved up, Upset. no nothing because no one taught you. Exactly. Like I like I said on the, on the last uh, program we had, people would do better if they knew better. Absolutely. You know, the byproduct of not planning is devastation, man. Like you're gonna, everything gonna be downhill because there's no plan. You have to plan. You have to be getting right information on this investment stuff because there is no financial independence without you you saving money, investing money. Mm-hmm. You're not gonna have no financial independence. And so people are like, nah, that that stock stuff or that investment stuff, I don't wanna do too much investing. Uh, you know, it's very risky. No, it's risky not to invest. Yeah. That's the risk. The risk mm-hmm. is not investing. Mm-hmm. You know, so don't people think I got to invest 3,000, 5,000. No, that's not. That's why it's very important that people link up with people who you know have this knowledge so that they can mm-hmm. teach you. Mm-hmm. We don't, our, especially in our community, mm-hmm. we, and it's not everybody. I got to say it's not everybody. But it's most, though. It's most. And it's most still of, most in, of yeah. this particular community, yeah. people are like, no, nah, I want to, they don't, it's kind of like I'll, walk over that bridge when I, when I get there. Yeah. But when you get there, it may be too late. Exactly. And I'm glad you said that because people think when it comes in, in, into investments and when it comes into, oh, you need to have a lot of money to invest. The more money you put in, yes, the bigger the return. But I, I started very low. I mean, I, I first, I invested into uh, uh, one or two shares of Tesla. Now I looked into the company and, and I said, you know what? I'm not going to just put the for now. What is next five to 10 years? Right. Electronic vehicles, I'm telling you, it's going to be a common conversation. I agree. Yeah, bro, oh, you got that? You, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's electronic because think about it. Gas is, you know, it's always is, is going to be there. If I could, you know, have an electronic car and I use uh, and I could buy my own system to even charge it or and or if I'm, you know, stopping somewhere, I'm paying five to ten dollars for it. And what businesses are starting to realize if I have these stations, right, because now malls have started to put them already. That's right. I see them out there. Yeah, so small plazas. Cause what happens is now this person's encouraged to even come and look a bit more around. Right. They're coming to see what's around here. You know, you could encourage their, your business to them or so forth. Sure. And I put Tesla. It was I. I bought it at um, four eighty four, and then my regret is that I sold it at six six thirty three because now mm, it's worth eight. It's it's worth eight. It's about eight forty four. But then it just goes to then, and that was me doing nothing. You understand? It was a way of me testing out to see what this thing's about. You Listen, you could even invest with $100 because there's something called... Oh, yeah, without stocks. question. There's something called penny stocks. Stocks where it's like $2, $3 now that are set to grow for. But now it just takes time. You know, you, you look into it, you invest in it. And I, I send, you know, some out to, to folks I know and giving them an opportunity. I give them a, 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 a let them uh, give them explanation of what the company is, what it's about, and where it's come. Because you have to. I'm looking for the next five to ten years. I'm I'm not waiting, you know, to be in some hard, difficult times. Right, to, right, right. Say, let me invest or let me put my money. And if I'm, let's say I'm a parent. Let's say I'm I'm fifty. You know, I have regrets. I didn't invest in what I wanted to invest in or what or whatnot. Doesn't mean I, it, it should stop me from teaching my kid. I agree. You know I mean, and parents don't have that fear because I know a lot of parents they're scared, especially within our community. Moment you teach a kid about money, they're gonna feel, oh no, he don't want to go to school no more. He don't want to go this no more. He doesn't want to be doctor. He doesn't want to be lawyer. Whatever the case is, and it's not to have that fear. You just communicate with your kid. Just Give say, I'm, I'm explaining this to you because the field you're going into, even if it's a doctor, because right, doctor, right. listen, I remember I'd be in hospitals, and I would hear nurses, oh yeah. I'm just finishing this 18 hour shift. 18 hours. Eight, one eight. Man, after about 11 or 12 hours, I, I people's head is gone. People, your head is gone. You're not even there no more. And that's what made me realize that's probably why it's so slow at the hospitals. You have people working these 18 hours. They're just there. Like, you know, when you're so tired, you can't even close your eyes. I know exactly what you're talking about. Your eyes are just open. You can't even close your eyes. And what they're doing is trading their time and for money. For money, exactly. That's what we got to get away from. We got to get away from that trading. Like, like when, when you really look at it, people work 52 weeks just to get paid twice a, a month. You are in a 30-day period, you're getting two checks. And some people may get 
weekly. So they may get four checks. Yeah. But you're you're making you're getting two to four checks every 30 days mm. for another company, another person who say, you know what? And I, that's why I always tell people, go after your dreams or spend the rest of your life helping somebody else go after theirs. Exactly. exactly. You're gonna help somebody yeah. with their dreams. Oh, absolutely. Why not be you? Why not at least take a step? It, I'm, when we get old, if God blesses to get old, mm. to see old, you know, see our old age, it's gonna be a lot of people. That's going to sit back and say, I wish I had done this. Exactly. The pain of change or the pain of regret, man. It's going to be some pain involved. Mm -hmm. But in the midst of that pain, there's going to be some change, you know. But can you imagine you, you getting in your 50s, your 60s, and you're like, dang, I should at least took, you know, I should at least looked at it to see what it was about. Mm -hmm. Some people just have this mind, nah, I'm good, I'm good. And then they ain't got $10 in the bank account. You see what I'm saying? Like, close mind. They always say, close mind, man. Like, you, you got to be open. I'm not saying just go after anything. Do your research. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. But don't just automatically shut your ears to stuff, man. It's, mm -hmm. it's crazy, man. But again, this is, we're not taught. We're mm -hmm. not taught, man. And I, when I say we, I'm talking about middle class. Yeah. The, the majority of the, of the American people and Canada, because yeah. Canada is in the same boat. You guys are like our sister. <laughs> Y'all, y'all in the same boat, man. You know, it's the same thing. I, I was looking at one statistic and it was saying how 80%. So every eight out of 10 people that you run into are living paycheck to paycheck to make oh, yeah, money. Absolutely. Eight out of 10 people. Yep. And it has nothing to do with salaries. Some of these people are making over six figures. Yep. Some of these people are making lower six figures. Mm -hmm. But eight out of 10 people that you see are literally one paycheck away from the whole house folding. Mm -hmm. That's what we call the, the rat race. In terms like now it's you're rushing in the morning, you're in traffic, you're trying to beat it because you know you can't you can't afford to even miss an hour. You know, Sorry. you know if you miss an hour, that's it. And what people don't realize is when you have assassets, you can use your assets to pay for your liabilities. That's you right. Understand? But what people you're are reading that rich dad, poor dad book, huh? Yeah, uh huh. They're using one asset to pay for everything. And so now it's like, man, you can't, it, it, it can't, it can't be done that way because now if, when you have kids as well, you know, they're going to have activities and I can't stop my kids from, you know, if you're obviously they're doing well, they're respectful and all that. Can't, stop, can't tell my kid no. So now what you do, man, I got to go get another job. Yep. Man, I got to, I got to go get another job. You go get a second job. You understand? And, and that it's like, it's almost like if it's, it's making no difference. There's so no difference. The third, you know? And it's all if you just put some investments aligned for that's why I tell people, people like say, man, I'm a plan for my kids by the time when they're 10 or eight. Why don't you plan for your kid before they're even born? Right. Why don't I you, you know, you have, they could, you could literally purchase an investment and have that. Look, you know, your kid's going to be born. You know, he's, you know, it's, it's in your will for him to obviously turn 18 and whatnot. Right. You can have an investment for the next 18. Can you imagine somebody born in 97? Or born in 98, 99, purchase an investment of Amazon stock. I say, look, we know the, we know these kids are gonna grow. You got three kids, you put three thousand dollars, three thousand dollars in it. They say the average price, uh average um uh money that you spend on a child up till he's 18 is about half a million dollars. So you're telling me you put three thousand, or if you have four kids, four thousand, you have five kids, five thousand dollars. My idea, you know how much money that would have been today? Because you, you know, you know, or even a bit uh, earlier. You're right. No, because they're gonna, they're gonna, they're, you know, they're gonna grow, right? Absolutely. So it's it's just for me. One quote that I saw, it was a a guy who was walking and he said, "Oh, nice car." He was talking to the to the owner, and the owner said, "Thanks. If you keep if you keep uh put, giving me your forty hours, I can, you can you, you can you can buy me one next next mm, year as I well." I think I seen that. It was a commercial, right? It was like a commercial, and it was like yeah. a, a, a a they put it like as a quote as well. Wow. You see that? I'm like, wow. That's how things, but that's how business work. So you got to figure out what can I do to take part in that. Like you had mentioned with um with the um what's the what's the, the uh, Airbnb the the, the Airbnb Wait, Airbnb the way that these guys started in San Francisco. These guys started they were living in a one bedroom apartment, mm -hmm. and literally uh, it was during Obama's administration with a lot of. Everybody came to San Francisco. There was no hotels around, so they said, "Listen, let's let's rent our uh our our apartment out, 
and let folks lay on a, you know, like an air bed, which where you get Airbnb. Mm -hmm. It would give them breakfast. And then literally out of an apartment of somebody's house, they had an idea. They put it in action. Mm -hmm. And it was during the recession as well. That's right. <clears throat> they, you're right. Correct. I think that was 08, 09. It was, it, was yeah, it was a recession. They put it in place. Now they're billionaires mm -hmm. and they own no one property. And that's what's crazy. All they did was leverage their time and say, listen, you rent you, if you allow us to use our platform to promote it, mm -hmm. if someone lives there, mm -hmm. you're going to give us a percentage of it. Same thing with Uber. Exactly. They don't have no cars. That's what what they do, cool. they recruited people with cars. Mm -hmm. And now they get a percentage. I, I, uh, maybe like a year ago, I got in an Uber and um, the guy dropped me off. I said, how much money are you making off this particular uh, drive? He said, I'm making $3 Ooh. off of this drive. For me to go home, it was eleven dollars. So you telling me <laughs> yeah. they made eight dollars? Yeah. And you made three dollars? Mm -hmm. I'm just like, man. And here Uber somewhere chilling. Exactly. They not paying for his car, nope. not paying for his gas, his nope. insurance, nope. but they learn how to leverage their time. Yep. That's business. Mm -hmm. Find out that here's the definition of business: find what people want and need, and then provide that service to them. It's that it's that simple. Simple as that. It's that simple. It could be a skill. It could be something that's a necessity. Something that's gonna, and you and you put it down. And and I'm glad what you mentioned in terms of how you paid eleven dollars for that and where Uber. And and that's what I'm explaining to people. It's don't focus on just that. Okay, you know if I'm the owner, let me make the eleven dollars. You know, then let me let me do that. But you know what? Let me find somebody to do it. That's I pay him right. a share because now eight dollars one time. Okay, come on, Sunday. That that ain't nothing. But now do eight times a hundred drivers. That's right. Do, do eight times five hundred drivers. Huh? That's right. Do eight, and it just and you know some trips are different, so it keeps growing. And when you focus on the, because that's what um Jack Ma was saying, the owner of Alibaba, focus on the small. I believe it was him. Focus on the small profits because those small profits, that's what is going to keep building and go a long that's way. Right. And so what people do. Within Jeff Bezos, he kept on reinvesting back into Amazon. People see some money that they never seen. Shoot, I gotta go buy this. I gotta yep. you're purchasing liabilities. Purchase your assets first so they pay off your liabilities. They said Jeff Bezos could literally spend, he could he could purchase like over a hundred Lamborghini Garlottos, whatever the case is, and it still won't be nothing to him. It, it's it, it, it's like it's literally nothing to him. He can literally. Well, if 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 he wanted, like it, let's just say if he wanted, because he purchased a house for 165 million dollars. And I say even, and this is what I'm trying to explain to people. People are people, of course, 165 million, man, that's a lot. That's crazy. If you put Jeff Bezos' net worth and you minus the percentage of what he can actually afford, it's not even 165 thousand, 165 million dollars. But yet people today. Not even making, not even making a, a, a six figures. They have a house, eight hundred thousand. They have a house, nine hundred thousand. They have a, a house. They can, you can't afford it. Right, can't afford you it. You know man. what I'm saying? So now that's where, when we realize, man, he's paying one hundred and sixty-five million for his house, but you put into the percentage, put that percentage from his actual network. It's not. That's like probably like a a twenty thirty thousand dollar house. For two people making six figures. That's and literally, do, they, and that's what I'm talking about. They people understand it. Nothing. They understand the concept. Like Warren Buffett, for, for instance, mm. he still lives in a house that he bought 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. How much did he this buy it for? Something like, it was something stupid, like a hundred something thousand, two hundred something thousand. It was about, it was about like 30, 30 37. 37 thousand. But it's worth 600 something thousand dollars today. 30 years ago, this man is a billionaire. <laughs> He's driving an old Cadillac. That's that's years old, an no old maid, Cadillac. No maid, no nothing, just a regular old man. He drives himself. He doesn't have a driver, not, no Gucci belt, no Gu But be honest, be honest now. If you see him, when you look at him, you don't know who he is. Tell me if you believe that guy's a billionaire. Tell me if you believe that guy. I wouldn't, but you know what, though? In my experience, like, in sitting down with, with uh, clients and potential clients, mm -hmm. Those that are not looked like the best, thousands in the bank. They can go in the bank and pull out 80 grand. Yeah, easy. And the person that's looking real nice, 
may have a little struggle. Again, this is the American people. Mm. And also, I know a little bit, few facts about Canada. This is Canada too. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Where, you know, it, it's the outer appearance. It's like, all right, I'm going to go. I'm going to go broke just so you guys can see me as I'm making a lot of money. Mm. And then this guy bought his jeans from Walmart and literally can go in his debit and pull $80,000 out. Debit, eh? Not savings. Debit, bro. Jeez, bro. I, I, and I'm just looking like, what? Like, and again, I don't want people to misunderstand me. Get you some nice things. I'm not telling you don't get nice things. Like, But just make sure you can afford those yeah, nice be things. Be wise. Be wise. It's plain and That's simple. That's all I'm saying. You want to go buy a Bentley? Go do your thing, man. It's not wrong with that. Exactly. Make sure Nothing wrong with that. Make sure you make keep it. Sure. Man, don't because don't, people because uh, the thing is people they, they 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 take cars and you know they say oh well cut out cars are not liabilities blah 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 when you're purchasing a car just to drive it to drive it it's a liability now if you're gonna go into the rental because I don't know if you heard something called Turo. Nah, I never heard it's of that. Literally, it's literally the car version of of Airbnb. So now people mm. it is instead of going to rent cars you just rent you just rent on Turo. You go on wow. to you purchase it and then and you put it out. So now what some people are doing, they're purchasing like Teslas for hundred thousand, and they're saying, "Man, I could literally just put this on for hundred and twenty dollars." People are saying, "You know what? Let me just go somewhere for the weekend, a hundred. You know, okay, a couple of hundred dollars. You know, I want to go somewhere with a wife. I want to just you know go maybe we're impressed, whatever the case is." Right, 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 right. They're literally paying off his Tesla. They're literally wow. paying off these people. So that's what people are starting to move to now. Right, but that's where a car can become an asset, but it's not always easy because there's insurance and you know all this right. Stuff. You got to pay all that. Yeah, you have to get something on a consistent basis. But when 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 you look in terms of you know um, today and and how uh, people just see money or see business, it's 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 to the point where they because like, like my my barber for example, he had a he had like a Jeep, a Jeep Wrangler. It's an, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's an expensive car. Like it's about over, it's over well over 30,000. But in terms of maintaining that car, you know, that thing, that is a money burner. And, you know, he, I believe he got into an accident. So I guess the car, you know, was not usable and whatnot. And he started driving um, a Honda, you know, just a Honda, wow. a Honda, Honda Civic. Right. And as he was, as he was driving the Honda Civic, he said, he started to realize man, you know, all like, I don't even like this. I would rather drive a car like this because at the end of the day, it's bringing me A to B instead of, you know, probably driving a car where people are saying, yo, that's a nice car. That's a sick, that's a sick car because man, I want to think about the years to come. If I'm purchasing a vehicle, how long is it going to last? That's right. Like, there's still 1998 Hondas being sold today. That's right. <laughs> and they're still running good. And running beautifully. Running beautifully. good, man. You know? And it's like, if people want, so people start to realize, man, I literally, I'm, I'm literally, you know, should I put $5,000 down for a car that's $20,000? Or should I just find a car to buy that's three, $4,000? Cause you can find a car. Right. You can find a car at those price ranges. And it's to the point where I, it, it comes to <clears throat> realize where people are starting to understand and realize, yo, if, if I put, uh, money in terms of investments, right? If I'm putting money into investments and I'm trying to make this money grow per se, because that's the ultimate goal is for that's this money to grow. Goal. I agree. What, what it could be like, for example, with stocks, because people say when you're getting stock, because you have to own the stock for about 60 days before you can be getting paid in dividends. But what people are encouraging is just that you, you reinvest the dividends back into the stock. So what is this? What you can do is like, let's say <clears throat> you put, um, with the Netflix, because Netflix was down. It was about, and that's another thing too. People panic as soon as they see red. When, okay, with stocks, when you see the dip, buy the dip because it has to that's, go. That's, that's good to buy. news for you. Because it's gonna go up. Good, right, it's good news. People look at it. Oh no, it's at four ninety. I'm not purchasing. And now next week it's at five sixty four. Right. So if you had the money to put in, you could easily. People make some one hundred, two hundred dollars a day trading stock. They wait till the market right. opens. They wait for the dip. They make the purchase, and then at the end of the day, they sell it, and then after that, they made two, three hundred dollars a day. And some are good with just that. Like that, just like that. You, you understand? Gotta educate yourself. And then, you gotta... cause, and then, because you have you have stocks as well that, in terms of, is an investment for the long term. So right, there's right. stocks where you can, you know, make that profit right away, but there's stocks for the long term, and right. there's stocks that's going to be paying you back within dividends. I tell people what you can do is you can purchase literally one stock, one share. Right? Let's say you have. 
uh, 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 $500, right? You want to buy uh, two of so-and-so shares. Let that grow. As that grow, you sell it. Now you can purchase more penny stocks. Now within the two stocks that you had that you made maybe two, $300 profit, you can take that profit. You could probably purchase a hundred penny stocks, 150 penny off stocks. Off that one thing off that you that, did. Off, off just that little, that mini, you understand? That's now right, you're just I putting agree. it back in so it can grow more. I'm not going to use that two, $300 profit and be like, yo, brother, you know what I'm saying? We at you, you feel me? We got that money, you know what I'm saying? We at you, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir, yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? We at you. Off of two, and that shows your lack of maturity. And when you mentioned, I wanted to mention so you could enlighten us on this more, but within Robert Kiyokowski, he was explaining there was a lot of things that they don't want the middle class or poor class to know. That's right. There's, there's a lot of things in terms of investments. It, they don't, they do not want you to know it. No, no, they don't. They don't. It's, it's, it's scary, but it's, it's crazy how the government is set up yeah. because again, they profit off of our ignorance. So we tell, if we teach you anything that's going to benefit you, it's even like in, in the medical field. Mm. Why is it we, you know, if they, if we start using the herbs that God tell us to use, mm. and he even told us what it's for, for the service of man, mm -hmm. but yet they rather say, no, let me give you some, some medication yeah. to not take away nothing, but just to kind of, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, pat you on the back. So it's the same thing with financial education. Mm. That's the way that they make money. That's the way that these credit card companies make money where they take our money and go make 18, 20, 30. I seen a credit card that was 34% interest. 34% if you were late. It started at like 27. And if you were late, 34%, yeah. they're making off this credit card. And now they give you back your little under 1% because if you look at the savings account on a bank account, I know here, here in the States, it's under 1%. So you got here under 1%. They're making 34% off our money. That's crazy. And then giving us little, little pennies. So I'm not teaching you about not getting a credit card because mm -hmm. I benefit off of that. And people don't understand when you get a credit card, you're being charged daily. Absolutely. It's not just, a, you know, it's not like you got fixed debt and then you have something called, you have fixed debt and then you have debt that just have no, there's no term on it. It's mm -hmm. just, you know, you'll be paying that for 20, 20, 30 years. But then you have debt where like, if I got a car payment, they would consider that to be like installment debt. Yeah. And then you have something yeah. called revolving debt where it just keep on going, keep on mm -hmm. going. That's what a credit card is. Mm -hmm. So people, but if I teach you this information, man, you're going to stop buying credit card. I mean, mm -hmm. you're going to start, stop using credit cards. Exactly. Or use it. We're never going to be taught that. So mm -hmm. that's why they don't, they don't teach it in school. How is it? teaching me about social studies. And again, I'm not against school. I want to make that very clear because sometimes when people hear me talk, oh man, it sounds like you're against school. I'm not against school at all. I'm just, give us more than one thing. Give us more than one path because it's not in everybody's path to go to college. Absolutely. And you can see the, uh, you can see the, the statistics now where most people drop out of college. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, people that were really smart in high school as well. It's not just people who, you know, just drop out, just to drop out. These are people who are 90 average. That's right. Drop mm -hmm. out. You know, you have, so give us other routes that we can take now so that, you know what, this may not be my route, but let me go try to build some type of, let me find out what I'm good at doing. Mm -hmm. Cause there's a whole bunch of stuff that's out there that we can do, exactly. you know, that may be happy for you. Like I may, you may got a guy that he liked to fix on cars. I used to jump on this guy who I knew who was a mechanic. He was an excellent mechanic. Wow. He can build a business, get other mechanics working for him. Mm -hmm. That will free his time up so he can go do something else. Exactly. And you always want to go into it thinking about ownership. How can I, I forget which one of the billionaires said it. I don't know if it was Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, or one of those guys. Mm -hmm. They said, I'd rather make 1% off of 100 people than to make 100% off of my own efforts. Exactly. They'd rather get 1% 1 off 100 people. That's how business work, man. Exactly. So if we could change, so that is my goal this year is to try to change the mindset, not only in financial literacy, but people, man, I've had people come to me literally crying, man. Bro, if you ain't teaching me this, man, like I remember this one sister, I won't call her name out, yeah. but she literally came to me in tears. Yeah. 
And all I did was teach her a strategy on how to attack her debt. Yeah, yeah. And now she cleaned up the debt and literally came to me about to cry. Yeah. And that's when I really looked at this thing. Like, Yo, this, because guess what? If I have more money available, now I can invest now. Yeah. Yeah. You can't invest if, if you're spending almost three grand to service debt. Yeah. What if you didn't have, what if you had that three grand available to you mm. and you invested that over here? Mm -hmm. Now you're retiring with dignity. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So the government, they're never going to teach us. Why in the world are you teaching me social studies, but not teaching me something like money that I use every day? Exactly, exactly. I use money every single day. That's what I say all the time. That's what I, everybody, <laughs> even they do, even the teachers do. Every day. Money every single day. How often are you using social studies? And I'm just using this if I got any somebody that teach social studies. <laughs> I'm not against that because it's good to know our history, good to know different things, language, all that. I'm, I'm all for it. But money should be in that curriculum. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Investing, how to go about investment. Mm -hmm. how to, all they do is teach us how to write a check mm -hmm. and how to get a job. Yep, and that's it. And I guarantee you, if they, when, when you know, they start to allow like a, a financial literacy or someone certified to go to the schools, because for me, I'm a certified financial educator and my, you pick your niche when you're a certified uh, educator over here. And my, my niche, it's, it's literally, it's literally for the youth. And the reason being is <clears throat> if I say you go into the schools and there's supplemental programs you can take, even if you know, you, you charge for it, I guarantee you the class is going to be sold out every time. I guarantee you. Oh yes. I yes. guarantee you because they're yes. going to start to realize I, I do need this. I tell people all the time, like, I know uh, uh, students, they want to be a nurse practitioner. One wants to be a dentist. Uh, uh, one wants to be, because uh, uh, what I do as well, I help them find what it is, what they want to do. Because I, I mean, I was dealing with one boy. He realized, man, he was just going to school because it's what his parents wanted him to do. But he wanted to understand where I'm not going to be happy with that. I want to know how to build. And I'm telling, and look, if you have like a, 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 a job out there, you can still build that business on the side. Right, nothing wrong with working. You know, you I'm not still keep your job, but <laughs> just like you got a spare tire for your car, you should have a spare tire for business. Exactly. That's something I'm doing part time. Exactly. We're not telling people to quit your job. We're mm -hmm. just saying, get yourself something out there where you don't have to depend on this one income. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You should have multiple streams of income. Absolutely. And, and the thing is, and I'm glad you mentioned that spare tire, because the biggest problem with people is say, you know what, I'll just I don't need a spare tire. You know, I, I don't need one right now. I'll just wait till something happens. Something happens. Now you have to stay there. You have to wait till a tow truck come get you. You have to wait. You put yourself so more far back. That's right. To actually be able well to. Move. Whereas if you had that spare tire, shoot, man, I really, it's really good to have something else to, right. to follow on. You know, and so <clears throat> I was, I was talking to him and I said, okay, what is something you, you're, you know you're good at? What is something you know you can see yourself doing? Because he also wants to own his, uh, his soccer club as well, which I don't stop it. It's just about, the thing is, a lot of times, if you may not know how to teach somebody something, what you can do is find out how you can teach them. Find out maybe who can teach them. Like, for example, let's just say um, you, uh, uh, you know how to run a basketball academy. I never ran a basketball academy. I could play, but when people see me, they're like, man, you played before. But in, I could probably run a basketball academy. I'm just giving an example. Right, right, right. I will say, you know what? Look, son, I don't really know how to do it. I know I, you see I'm good at basketball, but let me find somebody who can teach you. You get what I'm saying? Because right now it, we limit our, our, our kids That's what by you saying, because I can't teach you, nobody's going to be able to teach Nobody you. Teach you know what I'm saying? And even if it's like, look, brother Mark, even, you know, you're doing it for free, whatever. Here, here's two hundred dollars, cause now I'm I'm popping an idea in your head, man. All right, this is one two hundred dollars. Maybe the next time, if more people are like this, another two hundred, another, and you know you could see what you can build around it. You get what I mean? Right, and I agree. So I was explaining to him, very simply put, and he was saying, I know I'm good at math. I know I love math. I love numbers. Like I love dealing with money. So I said, all right, get into the finance. What is something you can do? We looked in terms of niches in the finance industry. We looked at there's business marketing, there's accountant and all this. And then he said he wants to be able to like manage. He wants to be, you know, be, and I said, okay, what about a business manager? Cause you could also help, you know, companies or you could work at the banks. And we looked at it, looked at salaries and boom, boom, boom. And he said, I'm with it applied. And that's it. You understand? And this is just from a simple conversation of having with him, but it's to explain to him as well. Cause he understood. Cause one thing he said as well, I'd like to know more about stocks. Say, oh, 
So I started to, you know, explain to him little by little and now making him an understanding because he started to understand, man, I don't need these other type of shoes. I don't need these other type of clothes. I don't need, man, just give me a, a, this type of car. If it can bring me from A to B, because now I've installed a different mindset in the, in the kid. You understand? Right, right. And I was telling the girl that's a dentist, man, you could even think about having your own practice. That's right. Having Because I didn't know, I really did not know. It is crazy. When you meet some people, you find out information that you never known before. I only thought dentists, you had to go to, you know, wherever there's a lot in there. I didn't know you could have just literally had your basement as a business and had your own. It could be a bit, it could be a, a bit because in Canada, as long as you just, uh, it's a legal business or whatnot, there's many things you can roam and do. And there's people that have their own practices. It could be at their house. They have yeah, their we own. We have that here too. It, yeah. Oh, here too. Okay. They have it. And I did not even realize it. So it's, it's just to give these kids, these, these kids an idea where, to not limit themselves and to understand what I can use, not what I can learn now, I can use in the future. And I tell them, talk to your parents, ask them these things, you know, just let them, let them know what you're learning. Let them know what you understand. You get what I mean? Right, right. But and many times the parents can be, it can be a hard thing because now many, because the parents are trained one way, go to yep. school. That's it. So <laughs> That's anything it. outside of that, even if they want to, it's hard for them to say, well, you can go ahead, take a step out and 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 see if you like this or like that. Mm. Nah, you going to school and that's it. I hear everybody exactly. say, oh, you going to school and that's it. But now that's, and that's why you got a lot of people dropping out of school. Yeah. But now they, they be in there one, two years, but I don't want to do this no more. Exactly. And now that's money down, down the drain. So many yep. times the parents mean well, but unfortunately you're, you mean it well cost this man 20,000 going to school mm -hmm. and now he's still now he's working at the hotel somewhere exactly and Making that's another thing too. Bucks. I, I i tell you know i tell parents the kid doesn't have to like it's it's it seems like it has to be a rush like if if kids could maybe if after they graduate high school if they could work somewhere if it'd be a year or a year and a half two years make the money so they can you know pay off to go because not all parents have the money to give their kids and so a lot of kids have to do they have to go and take loans and not realizing people are pushing you. Yeah, go. You're taking all these loans, everything. But you ask, you ask how many of those kids after they graduate, how many people are helping them pay off that debt? They're all pushing you to go. They're all telling you, you ask them how many, how many people are helping you pay off that debt? Oh, you're on your own now. No, you, you, you graduated. You could go do it. Next thing you know, they have their degree, PhD, DDE, all of this. You're going to apply, 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 and they're ending up at a job making maybe a couple more thousand dollars than the person who never went to school. Because I was, I tell people all the time, language. If you start investing in learning another language, I am being bilingual in Canada. My, you listen. You have to get paid more. You have. They cannot pay you the same way they pay someone that speaks one language. You're I doing agree. more work. I agree. Five days. You take maybe a year, year and a half. Learn another language, boom! Because you're, 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 you're some jobs you don't have to have the greatest of French. You may have a very heavy accent, but hey, if you could speak it, you could understand it, you can write it. It's good enough for me. And now people are starting to realize these things. So that's where I tell people: it doesn't have to be. You're you're, you're putting pressure on the kid because some kids look. This generation, something that you mentioned, uh, the, the last podcast, they cannot handle pressure. No. They cannot. Handle it, and I ask them all the time. Can you like? Can you handle pressure when things when you're digging deep? Can you handle? Just because as a parent, man, I was able to do it. I know I can do it. It doesn't mean your kid can. No, different oh, generation. Look, Mike Mike Tyson. He was able to box. He was able to do his fighting, his left and right. He was able to go in there, go through the crowds. But obviously, he realized he knows his kid is not going to handle that. No, he knows his no. kid is not going to be able to deal with that. No. Well, that's why I tell parents just because you can and look, some parents, those of you that are immigrants, a lot of times you come from hard realities. Your kid has almost everything. And they got a phone, they can go out. They don't have to, listen, your kids never have to worry about food the next day. It's different from somebody that did. So when you're telling a kid, no, you gotta go, you have no, there's some listen. Some could be 18, but their mind is still in grade seven. Right. It's still 30. Have you met somebody like old? Oh, yes. I and you're like, man, time. this person, is this old? And they have no common sense? Right. I mean, they're coming to tell you, eh, but I, I'm saying what you got to do, young blood, man. You got to get find a couple of honey, you feel me? And then make them pay for everything. 
Y'all been met men like this, man? Oh, yeah, I have. I have plenty. No? Plenty. Just, mm -hmm. So just because somebody is 18, 25, 35, is their mind 18? Is their mind 35? There's yes. kids whose minds is 5, 10 years older. That's where, you know, there's some kids, they even have to skip grades. They're like, yo, right. there ain't no business. This kid, this kid's grade 4, and he's like this. We might as well put him in grade 7. We might have, and that's what right. it goes in outside after high school as well. There's people, their minds is just different. They can build, they can, you know, so that's where I, I, I tell parents, if, if, if literally the kid needs maybe an extra four or $5,000 to go to school debt-free, let them just work to get that extra four or 5,000. So it helps you and go. Cause now you're telling yourself, uh, you know what? He can just take that four thousand, four or $5,000 loan. Big risk. You don't know what's going to happen. If that's a small loan. Exactly. It's a small one, but you never know what that small loan, the interest can end up so big. That's you how they get know, you. You know, you need to go get this. You need to go get that. You need to go. And it just keeps going over and over and over and over again. And I explained this. That's why I say to parents, moreover, just you really need to just communicate with your, with your kids daily from don't wait till they're in grade 12 to say, what are you going to do next year? Because right, right, in your right. mind, my kid, they're just going to university and that's it. You don't know what it is that they really want to do. You never right. talk to them. You never communicate with them. That's why what you say, they go to school first year too. You know, I know there's people that went to school four years and they just went, they had to go back again because they just did the four years just because of pre pressure from parents. I remember I was at a college and I was in class. The girl said, oh, I, I've been in school for 12 years. And wow. I said, what? Because she wanted to be a, a lawyer, but now she's kind of just figuring things out differently. Like, when you don't when you don't have these discussions, when you don't kind of expose them to certain things, just test them out. 13, 14 years old, send them to the store around the corner. Give them $10 and say, look, I need you to go, you know, go, go get anything. See what they're going to do. You may have a kid, that whole $10 is gone. You may have a kid that says, all right, I spent something a dollar, two dollars so I can save the rest for later. Beautiful. You may have a kid as well. Look, I mean, can I just keep it? You get what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Over time, there's a mindset being developed. Now that mindset when the kid's constantly purchasing that, and if the kid can't even manage $10, how's he going to manage $10,000? Come on. So who's teaching them? Exactly. That's always my argument is who's teaching them? Teaching them because yeah. I can only do what I know to do. Yeah. But if someone's teaching me from, I mean, you got to start them off early. They go a dollar. Make sure 10 cent of that go to God. Mm hmm Make sure uh, another percentage go to your savings. Mm -hmm. So you have ten dollars, but you don't have ten dollars now. Yeah. That's got to be taught when they're young. Yep. So then when they grow up, they grow up with that mindset. Absolutely. So now they can try to. But again, who's teaching the parents that? No, no, nobody. And this is why my. This is why I'm so passionate about getting to as many people as possible because. Mm -hmm. You could, you're not just changing the parents' life, you're gonna change the children's life. Absolutely. The children who's connected to them. Oh, yeah, you know, my, my mom taught me this. They're gonna go home with that. So you start, that's the way you can start changing the community up. Man. Absolutely, absolutely. That way people are not at a funeral just sitting there broke, yep. no investments, well, and sitting there just looking, what in the world are we gonna do? Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? So education is everything. So this program you have, man, it's a it's a big deal, my brother. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, so I I, I yeah. just got um because now I'm gonna be at the end of February. I was just invited to you know teach uh some financial literacy to university students um at a seminar. It's an association at the university here in Canada, and you know that's just you know it, it's one step just going forward. You know people are starting to understand and see the message. And I know when after a few years they're gonna re like they realize man this is good information being given. Right, right. But then they're gonna realize man five ten years from now, wow. I can see, I can see why he was doing this. I can see why he was teaching us this. It is so important to learn this. Very important. That's why I don't mind doing it. I, I got a um, I actually got two events coming up. One with with the with the children, mm -hmm. like in seventh, eighth grade, mm -hmm. and then also to the parents Wonderful. in the school system, uh, Lord willing, next month. Yeah. And it's you gotta get the kids when they're young. Yeah. So I, I taught something at uh, you know, at the church a few years ago during the youth during the youth committee mm. and you know some of, or your youth convention yeah and you know some of those kids still remember that information that mm -hmm. was taught and this was probably three years ago wonderful they still remember the information <laughs> so hopefully they can just apply it now when they get older but just the fact that they're like yo i remember when you when you taught us that man remember you was talking about this talking about i was teaching them different principles and stuff like that so 
one person at a time, man. That's all it takes one money. person at a time. But to go back to the, the questions we did, there is no wrong answer because it depends on how that person is looking at it. Yeah. So 850 to them is very important to have a good credit score to them because maybe they had a bad credit score throughout their life. Yeah, yeah. They never experienced having a good. You may have this person, they're like, look, I need that 2 million now because I'm not sure if I'm going to live. Because that's true. Yeah. What yeah. if you die in a year? Exactly. Then you only made... Four four thousand. You only made sixteen thousand times twelve. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? So, no one is have a wrong, but I just pick C because I understand if you're doing it the right way, you're investing the money the right way. Absolutely. You can make way more throughout the course of it than you would with just two million dollars. Exactly, exactly. And also, but now, nah, man, this this was wonderful, wonderful, wonderful information given. Those of you that are here, you heard it. As you can see, man, you see, you see, you see people I'm bringing for you. You see brothers I'm bringing for you. I'm bringing brothers that have education to educate you. You understand? And as it being said, for me, I I, I always put it like this, because uh, there was a video that says I'm against school, but I'm not against education. Mm. When I saw that, I'm like, what? Because the school is the building. But what's being inside is the kids are supposed to be educated. And so when you realize, man, you ask the teachers, will I, you know, use this in the future? No, you're not going to have to use this unless you want to be a mathematician or whatever. You're not going to use it. So why are we being taught it? You understand? It, it makes no sense. And at least they're keeping it real. At right, least right, they're keeping right, it real. Yeah. You know? And, and I always wondered, man, because with math, with all these equations and stuff like that, I said, can I, can I, if I get these equations wrong, Will that avoid me paying bills every month? No, you're going to have to pay them bills, buddy. You got to pay them bills, man. <laughs> you could come and tell them all of that calculus and all this and that. You're going to say, wow, impressive. But all right, mathematician, you got to still pay your bills. That's right. Plain and simple. So um, once again, everybody, like the, the, these shows is just to educate you. This is not to knock anybody that has a job, no. or whatever the case is. It's not at all. We're just simply saying, just start to think differently. Like, why are you going to constantly want to complain every single day, all the time? Your kids are going to hear it. Then they're going to be scared because they don't want to, you know, end up like that complaining That's all right. the time. And, you know, they may, you know, have to uh, do decisions that um, could affect them. You understand? Right. Because now there's a rush, there's pressure. They're going to say, man, my mom's always struggling. Let me go see how I can make this money. That's Whatever right. the case is, you understand? Marriages just break up because of it. Exactly. Without having finances is the number one, sometimes it's number two. Mm -hmm. It kind of goes back and forth with communication. Yeah. yeah. But finances is the number one reason why marriages are broken up. Hey. So if that's the number one that will ruin someone's marriage. Why not learn about finances? Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's, a, whole no that's, that's a, a whole nother conversation, bro. That's a whole nother conversation right here, conversation. Man. <laughs> hey. Why not learn about it? You know, mm -hmm. and, and it's not a, it's not a hard thing. Mm -hmm. Financial education, very simple, but it's just, it's hitting. So if Absolutely. you don't have someone educating you, because many times to even get it, sometimes people pay. Yeah. You, know, you have to pay them. Yeah. And you, you know, you should pay for their services. Mm -hmm. But when you got somebody like, myself and other people that's offering this stuff free of mm. charge mm. you have no excuse to at least sit down and, and get this information in you listen exactly you know and i'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's what one thing um because one thing i was out out telling the, the students don't don't be stupid you know when you're in university don't be dumb you know i remember i known like i tell people all the time just you're only fooling yourself and i remember my mom you know i'll give you an example she was just always talking to me about this one girl a couple of years ago. Oh, black woman, independent, head on her shoulders, all this and that. And ends up, you know, she goes to university and whatnot. And, you know, fast forward, um, you know, uh, my mom's like, she, she would keep, she was calling her mother saying, or oh, her roommates constantly bringing guys in and all this and that and left and right. And I kid you not, man, my mom comes back to me. She said, you won't believe it. I said, what? She pregnant. What? What do you mean she, the same girl that you told me head on her shoulders, all this, huh? What do you mean? And it, it, just, it just goes to show, and on top of it, the guy she was pregnant with already had like two kids. So that guy just, and it's what the point I'm trying to make, um, not to bash or anything, but it's just to put you an example where if you're not focused, you know, those decisions, because I tell people there's realities that set people back financially. Oh, you could okay. learn, you could learn the stuff, 
But let's talk about the reality of what really set them back. Now you have a kid, because not all parents can take that. Some parents won't kick you out. Some parents will kick you out and keep the kid. I agree. You know and now agree. in terms of daycare and all this and that, <clears throat> who's going to work for that kid? Right? So that's why I tell students, if you're watching this, when you're in university or college, get what you have to get done. Do what you have to do. You may find somebody, you know, you talk to and communicate with, but I'm telling you, it takes, look, listen, it takes years and months and whatever to build. It takes one moment, man, just to just flush it off. Just that's, that's right. it. Just, just like one. That. You understand? Well and now it's, it's like when you, you end up in these certain situations, you end up with these circumstances. It, it, it's, you know, it's, it's tough. that could even, that could kill a mother. That could kill a mother. That could kill a father. That could give him a heart attack. You understand? Because they, they weren't expecting it, you that's know? True. And so that's where it's like, I'm so glad and great. I always tell them, make sure when you're even getting involved with somebody, you you question their finances. You question, because a lot of the times it could be someone that's just using you. Because me, I was a student athlete, and I know how athletes are. Sometimes they just need to have a girl for those few years because, you know, they're, they're, they're bored. You know, they need that girl to pay for their stuff. True. That's true. Them this, to buy this. And as soon as that four years is gone, gone. <laughs> You're gone. looking for him all over the place. He's gone. He disappeared, you know? And then you have another situation where there's men, they'll you, and it's a lot of, it's mostly women, man, because I've met women, you know, educated, very intelligent, but with a bunch of bozos. Like, I, I never understood that. Here he is driving your car, going to the gas station. You have to even pay, put the gas in it, and you have to get down to even put the gas in the car that he's driving all day oh, and day a lot long. of the times too they'll use them to pay off their debt and i say that's and i think even pj has mentioned it as well marrying somebody that's in debt bro it's one of the it's it's the worst things you could ever do that's true. why would i want to marry true. somebody you're in three hundred thousand dollar debt here i'm debt free and you're telling me but if you love me we're gonna pay this debt together but we didn't oh, build that no. debt together <laughs> yeah, right that's right we didn't build it together right and now you get that debt now you go into a marriage and then probably you, you, you get more loans. You put yourself in more debt. And it's just, right. that's what like my, my cousin who used to work in a bank, he said he had um, the dumbest people he, that would come, doctors and lawyers, the dumbest people. I said, doctors and lawyers, what are you talking about? And he, he made mention, plain and simply to the point where they were already in, in doubt, like, like he was talking about thousands of dollars of debt. They would come to the bank get a loan to go get married and be put more in there. And he'd wondered, why do they do that? You know what they say? Oh, you know, our jobs are going to pay it off. So that's where it's like, you're working. So you're telling me I have to work 80 to 90 hours a week, 80, 90 hours a week. And that, that is barely sometimes being paid off because now they want to go purchase a big house. Now they want to purchase a big car and they're literally living their whole life paying off debt. Then they have kids, kids come, they have to do for kids funds. And listen, kid is, Kid is 20, 25, 30 years old. Parents still, still have that debt. That still interest, have man. That interest, man. I would I would say say this. I heard a guy say this named Brian. He said, interest is the penalty you pay hmm. to, to get something early that you cannot afford. Exactly. So you're going to be penalty. So is it worth buying it two and three and four times? Yeah. Is worth are you getting them sneakers? Is it worth buying it two, three? four times just to have it earlier than what you can get it because mm. you couldn't just pay it right off exactly exactly that's something yeah. man it's crazy you know and and people you know they have a closet full they have a house full of things they don't even need they don't like why am i gonna buy a three five hundred dollar pair of shoes i'm not even gonna wear it every day i'm not even gonna wear it every i gotta wear that once a month ah man i gotta wear it you know what i'm saying i'm gonna go right here i gotta wear it once a Come on, man. Like it's just, it's just. Look, man. I'm gonna Crazy, keep my man. shoes. If it, hey, if it fits, it works. Plain and simple. simple <laughs> you know. That. I hear that, man. It works, you know. So, but I'm gonna conclude. You know, I know, brother Mark. He's, 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 a, he's, he's a busy man. You know, so he's a busy man. As you can. Uh, I appreciate you having me on, man. Uh, it was definitely a good discussion. Always a pleasure. When I see my brother, man, it was good seeing you doing the end of the year service. Absolutely, absolutely. And we hope, Lord willing, we get a chance to see you the upcoming uh, within youth. youth. Yeah, I know they're they're doing more, you know, they're like it's more complicated now before, but you know, I'm I'm a, I'm still God willing. Let's see what can happen and do what I can. 
You understand? Like I tell people moreover, man, like, look, you don't know when this pandemic's going to finish. You don't know when it's going to end. And if this is what's going to keep you behind from, you know, making that sacrifice, shoot, then you're going to go, right? So I'm just doing the best I can to hopefully, God willing, um, be able to to attend and go, brother. But it was wonderful seeing you, brother. Uh, it was grateful yes, seeing you, saints. Those of you that are watching, this is Brother Mark Marini. Brother Mark, where can they um, find you? Where can they get you? So, um, so you can find me, you can email me at Marini, M-A-R-I-N-N-I-E, Jr. at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, contact me, man. We, we give out, we literally teach people free of charge. We do it over the Zoom so that we can be able to follow all protocols, mm -hmm. um, especially if you're in the States. You know, you want to contact, it's free of charge. And it doesn't hurt to sit down and see what's going on, see how you can put yourself in a better situation financially. And people so from I'll, Canada could contact you as well. Without question. Okay, perfect, perfect. Those of you heard it, and then your Facebook? Uh, Facebook is my uh, first name, last name, M-A-R-K. Mm -hmm. Last name, Marini, M-A-R-I-N-N-I-E. That's my Facebook. Um, and I actually, I'm going to give you that information, so I guess you could put it in. I can put, I'll put it in the description as well. Description. And you don't have, I don't think you have Instagram. No, nah, no, nah, I'm thinking about it, though. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. I ain't got it yet, but I think I may... You know, whatever platform I can try to utilize, because I got to get this message out. Yeah, that's my Instagram, goal, Instagram, man. Like this, Facebook is like it was what Instagram is pretty much today. Back like when, like 2010, 2011, oh. pretty much, you know, or what if it was there at that time? It was that big. It was that big thing, you know. And now Instagram, but Instagram is a lot of fakers. Right. A lot of people. It's easy to to show and manipulate somebody and make it seem like you have it and you don't. Like I could go if I want go into a rich neighborhood. Stay in front of a house and say, I get it like I get it. I'm just putting a caption. You don't even know if that house is mine or somebody else's. That's true. That's true. Now, what I do, I'm going to say, hey, if you want to know how I got this house, pay for my $5,000 course and I'll teach you how. Next, you know, people not realizing you're the one paying for the house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so you're saying Instagram is a good thing to, to, to have? Absol abs absolutely. There's a, like, there's a lot of like, like literally people now what they're starting to do, they're just starting to learn off of Instagram pages. Like they're not even good because so much free information is being put out there, but still people are not taking it. People aren't uh, following it. They're just seeing it, blah, blah, blah. But you have to be, a lot of people, they have to be cautious as well because there's a lot of fakers. There's, oh, a, lot of stars. there's a lot of scammers on it. Yeah. <clears throat> they're telling you, man, I made $10,000 this month. Let me show you how, blah, blah, blah. And they start explaining certain things. And you're kind of like, man, this makes no sense. And then when you see it's not working and you go to them, they're going to say, oh, it's just you. It's just your fault. You don't know what you're doing and blah, blah, blah. Not realizing it's they're making this $10,000 from people purchasing their course. Now, if right, there's right. a course to be purchased, that person has to be legitimate. That person that's has true. to be able to give you information that's going to help you progress. That's going to help you improve. When I charge for my financial literacy course, I only just charge for my time. Just And it's something little, minimal. It's nothing major at all. It could be within a 10-week program, $85 to $100. That's about, uh, if it's $100, it's $10 a week. You understand? Man, financial education? Financial education. And they have access to me. I tell them, you can email me whenever. You can have one-on-ones with me whenever. No problem. No doubt about it. Whenever. I'm not going to charge you for that. There's people, they'll charge you just to have one-v-ones with them. They'll charge you any information like that they're giving them. And, you know, I, I pretty much go from there. But I, I just... You know, I want to stick to my core, stay legitimate, and help the youth out to the best of my ability. But I'll definitely get your, your information, put it in the description. Those, if you have any questions, please, if you have any comments, leave it in the comment section. You can get to Brother Mark person. You can get to myself. But also, sometimes a question can help others. So put I it agree. in the comment section. You know what I'm saying? That question could be, because somebody not thinking about that question. You're right. And now you get an answer. Now it's like, man, I didn't know that. Now everybody can see that. You know what I, I mean? Agree. Versus if you go, I mean, if it's something personal, something within, you know, to, for finances or the debt you're in, you know, go to Brother Mark personally, or you can go to anyone personally, but don't, you know, come into the comments, Brother Mark. Okay, hey, right, right, right. Oh, baby, oh, can you help me out? I'm in this much thousand dollar debt. You know what I'm saying? My husband won't leave me, but you know, you don't have to come in the comment section. No, no, no better not do that. Privately and message Brother Mark Marini, yeah? Right, right, so right. We'll definitely get the information and uh, put that in the description for you, all right? So Wonderful. once again, Brother Mark, thank you very much. Those of you that are watching, once again, this is sponsored by Je Vigoué, Je Vigoué .ca, affiliated with One Church, First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ, where the leader, teacher, and guide is Apostle Pastor Gino Jennings. You can go on the truthofgod.com and search and see if there's a local temple in your area. Also, there's live service every Sunday. Uh, the times have changed. What times are they at now? 
Uh, but I believe um, it's one o'clock, and I believe again six. at um, six. Six o'clock. So time. So it starts. It uh, starts at one. Still, so the same time for one, and then the afternoon. I think it's the evening that changed. Evening, the evening right. was five, but now right. it's for six, six p.m. Six and those yep. of you, oh well, my family is Spanish. We got Spanish live webcast Tuesdays and Thursdays. Oh, you know, uh, French live webcast Tuesdays and Thursdays. And I'm pretty sure, God willing, there could be other languages to come. You know, I believe I know there's already one guy um asking in the on the Instagram comment if there's in Creole, you know, for Haitians and whatnot, because some people they just can't understand English. You understand? So God willing, look, God can do anything. I know I believe it. If it can happen, it will happen. It just it needs to have its time before it happens and whatnot. I agree. Right. So once again, Brother Mark, thank you for tuning in. Thank you. I appreciate you having me, brother. Appreciate you taking out the time. Like I, I I know people sometimes maybe feel like maybe I overdo, but I really appreciate the time because time you can't get time back. No, no, you, you can't, can't get time back. If imagine this podcast was a time just wasting your time, you can't get that back. May lose twenty dollars, you could get that back. You could even get that back in double. So I'm truly grateful and 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 thankful for that you took the time out just to simply come and educate the folks. I really, I really sincerely- Oh, that's no problem at all, man. I appreciate you having me, man. No, anytime, brother, anytime. Anyways, everybody, here you have it. It's your boy, Sonny Nesperance, brother Mark Marini. Take care, God bless, and peace be to you all. Yes, sir. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs>